You think buying a $30,000 Cessna means you have outsmarted the system, but the real cost is just beginning. Every bargain plane is a bill nobody paid, and every skipped repair is now your debt, with a single hidden floor capable of turning that deal into a $70,000 black hole before you ever fly home. Can you spot the financial landmines most new buyers miss? Or are you about to learn why the cheapest plane is often the most expensive lesson in aviation? Scroll through the listings and there it is, a 1968 Cessna 150, asking price $28,000. The photo looks inviting, the paint shines, the seats are not torn, and the ad promises low time, runs great, fly at home. The mind starts to wonder, that is less than a new car, less than a year's rent in half the country. The idea blooms, why not? It is a real airplane, not a toy. It is not some basket case in a field. It is a flying machine for the price of a used Camry. The seller S-Words nudge you along, perfect for a student pilot or weekend flyer. Cheap to own, cheap to fly. The urge tightens, the bargain feels real. The numbers seem to back it up. Insurance, maybe $1,000 a year. Hangar or tie down, another $80 a month. The engine is a Continental O200, the same one that has powered trainers for decades. What could go wrong? You start picturing yourself in the left seat, logbook in hand, sunset ahead. The urge to call the seller is almost physical. Maybe you could talk him down to $26,500. Maybe you just found the last good deal in aviation. The comments online all say the same thing. Get in while you can. Prices are only going up. The logic is simple. It is a Cessna, not a Ferrari. It is basically a flying lawnmower. Parts are everywhere. The FAA cannot possibly make it that hard to keep one flying. Your finger hovers over the contact button. The hook is set. The bargain is real on the screen at least. For a moment, the dream is alive. $28,000 and you are in the air. No mention of logbooks, no talk of corrosion, no thought of what is hiding under the cowling. Just the thrill of the hunt, the illusion of the deal. The first taste of ownership, sweet and simple, right before reality walks in. Before any money changes hands, there is one call that matters more than the seller's pitch. Call a mechanic who does not care if you buy the plane or not. That is your independent inspector with inspection authorization. The inspector who works for you, not the guy trying to unload a project. For a fee between $500 and $1,500, he will go through the airplane like it is a crime scene. He starts with the logbooks, missing pages, 12-month gaps, a signature that does not match the mechanic's certificate number. These are red flags. He checks for missing annual inspections, skipped airworthiness directives, and pencil-whipped entries where the ink is newer than the supposed date. Next comes the walk-around. He looks for corrosion under the carpet, checks the seat tracks for play, and runs his fingers along the wing spar for white powder or bubbling paint. The checklist is long, every airworthiness directive, every calendar time inspection, every system that could cost you your next paycheck. He will pull the cowl and check the engine for oil leaks, cracked hoses, or evidence that the engine has not run hot enough to burn off moisture. If the seller flinches when the inspector asks for a borescope inspection, you know you are about to inherit someone else's problems. A real pre-buy is not a rubber stamp. It is a hunt for deferred maintenance, the stuff that turns a $28,000 plane into a $70,000 money pit. The inspector does not care about shiny paint. He cares about paperwork, compression numbers, and the smell of mildew in the baggage compartment. The report you get back is blunt. Airworthy or not, what is legal, what is about to break, and what the last owner swept under the rug. As one inspector puts it, a cheap pre-buy is the most expensive thing you can skip. My job is not to make friends. My job is to keep you from buying a nightmare. The right inspector, working for you not the seller, can save you tens of thousands of dollars and months of heartbreak. The pre-buy is your firewall. Without it, you are gambling blind. The seller brags about low engine hours, but that number does not tell the whole story. 
On paper, the Continental O200 is good for 1,800 hours between overhauls. That is the magic number buyers chase. But here is the catch. Time between overhauls is just a guideline, not a guarantee. It assumes the engine is flown regularly, oil gets hot, and moisture is burned off. What the logbook will not say up front is how long the engine has been sitting. A Cessna with 800 hours since overhaul sounds like a prize until you see the overhaul date, 1995. The plane flew maybe 10 hours a year, sometimes less. That is not a selling point. That is a warning. Engines are like old bones. If they sit, they rust. Oil drains down, leaving bare metal exposed. Moisture creeps in through breathers and temperature swings. The inside of a cylinder does not care how many hours are on the tach. It cares about time, humidity, and neglect. After a few years idle, the camshaft and lifters start to pit. Corrosion forms on cylinder walls. The next time the engine fires up, that rust acts like sandpaper, grinding away at every moving part. You cannot see it from the outside. The only clue is in the logbook gaps. A year here, two years there, maybe a long winter with no flights at all. The calendar does not lie. Manufacturers and mechanics know this. Lycoming and Continental both say an engine that has been sitting more than a year without proper preservation is living on borrowed time. It does not matter if the tax says 500 hours. If the last overhaul was 30 years ago and the plane has been parked for 10 of those years, you are not buying a low time engine. You are buying a corrosion lottery. The real risk is not what is written in the logbook. It is what is hiding inside the metal. And by the time you find out, it is usually too late. The borescope doesn't care about wishful thinking or seller promises. Slide it into the spark plug hole and the truth comes into focus. Pitted cylinder walls, brown streaks of corrosion, and flakes of metal clinging to the oil. These aren't just cosmetic blemishes. Each scar is a warning that the engine's days are numbered. A healthy engine shows smooth steel, a light crosshatch from the last hone, and clean piston crowns. What you see here is the opposite, a graveyard of neglect. The cam lobes have started to pit, lifters are freckled with rust, and the cylinder walls are etched with lines that won't polish out. That's the legacy of sitting for years with cold oil and humid air. No amount of low time on the tatch erases what moisture does to bare metal. The next clue lands in the oil filter. Cut it open and you find silver shavings, tiny sharp fragments of the engine itself. That's not routine wear, that's metal on metal, the aftermath of corrosion grinding away at moving parts. It's the moment when hope turns into a repair bill, a real overhaul. Quote from 2024 doesn't pull punches. For a Continental O200 that looks like this, the estimate comes back at $32,400 for a field overhaul, parts, labor, and shipping. If you want a factory Riemann, the number climbs past $40,000 before you even add installation. The invoice is blunt. Tear down, machine work, new cylinders, new cam, new bearings. Every shortcut the last owner took now comes due with interest. This is where the dream cracks. One buyer, still wincing at the memory, puts it this way. I thought I was saving money. The first annual, the mechanic called me over and showed me the filter, metal everywhere. I was grounded for six months and $35,000 lighter before I flew again. The math is simple, but the lesson is hard. A $28,000 airplane with a dead engine is a $60,000 airplane before you even touch the avionics. The trap isn't hidden. It's right there in the borescope image and the invoice total. All you have to do is look. There is a line in the logbook that can turn your $28,000 airplane into a grounded display piece overnight. It is called an AR Worthiness Directive, an order from the FAA, not a suggestion. The Cessna Seat Track Airworthiness Directive is infamous. The problem is simple. Worn tracks let the pilot's seat slide back under power. If that happens on takeoff, you lose reach on the controls, pull the yoke, and risk stalling the airplane at 50 feet. The FAA does not negotiate on this. 
If the seat tracks are worn past spec, you are not legal to fly, not for a minute. The fix is not a squirt of grease and a handshake. The inspection alone runs $500 to $1,000. If the tracks or rollers are bad, the kit costs between $3,000 and $5,000, plus labor. Some shops quote even higher if corrosion or extra parts are found. Now, insurance underwriters pay attention to this. A plane with an open seat track. Airworthiness directive is a liability. Some carriers will not touch it. Others will slap a 30% surcharge on your premium or deny coverage until you show proof of compliance. That is not theory. It is standard practice for Avemco, AOPA, and the rest. As one underwriter puts it, an unaddressed seat track airworthiness directive is a red flag for hidden neglect. If you skip it, you are not just breaking the law, you are betting your policy on a technicality. The seat track directive is a legal debt, not an optional upgrade. Until it is satisfied, your Cessna is not an airplane. It is a paperweight with a tail number. The government does not care what you paid or how shiny the paint looks. The only number that matters is the invoice for compliance and it is coming due. There is a kind of corrosion that does not announce itself until it is too late. It starts as a faint white powder under the carpet or a little bubbling in the paint by a wing root. But when moisture creeps into the wing spar, the backbone of a Cessna, it does not just stain the metal. It eats it from the inside, working its way along rivet lines and hidden seams. The process is slow, silent, and merciless. Intergranular corrosion splits the aluminum along the grain, turning a solid spar into a honeycomb of weakness. On the outside, the plane might look fine. Underneath, the structure is crumbling. A wing spar is not a fender or a seat cushion. It is the main support that holds the entire wing on the airplane. If it is compromised, the plane is not just unsafe, it is finished. There is no patch kit for this, no mechanic will sign it off. The FAA does not negotiate with physics. Once corrosion takes hold in the spa, the cost to repair or replace it exceeds the value of the whole airplane. That Cessna that sold for $28,000 is now worth scrap metal prices, no matter how new the radios are or how fresh the paint looks. Some buyers think they will get lucky, that a little surface rust is just cosmetic. But the truth is, by the time you see corrosion on the outside, it is already deep inside the structure. Shops quote $5,000, $10,000, even $15,000 just to try to salvage a spa, and most will not even attempt it. The rule is simple. Spa corrosion is a death sentence. The plane is totaled, walk away. There is no coming back from this kind of rot. The cockpit of a $30,000 Cessna looks like a time capsule. Knobs yellowed with age, radios stamped with FCC tags from the Carter administration, and a transponder that hums but cannot legally squawk in most of today's airspace. The law changed in 2020. If you want to fly within 30 miles of a major airport or climb above 10,000 feet, you need ADSB out. That is not a suggestion, it is a federal requirement. No ADSB, no clearance. The cheapest legal upgrade starts around $5,000. That is for a basic transponder and a GPS antenna, installed by a shop that has seen every shortcut in the book. But that is just the entry fee. The real pain starts when the technician opens the panel. Old wiring, splices wrapped in electrical tape, antenna cables so brittle they crack when touched. Each surprise adds hours of labor and a fresh line on the invoice. Shops quote $7,000 to $10,000 for a clean install and more if the original panel was never meant to handle modern avionics. If you want to fly IFR or if the old radios are dead, the number jumps to $15,000 or more. One avionics installer says there is no such thing as a $5,000 ADSB job on a Cessna from the 1970s. By the time the wiring is fixed and the system is made legal, most owners are in for at least $8,000 to $10,000. That is the reality. The government does not care how much you paid for the airplane. The law is the law and the bill is yours. A whiteboard does not care about hope or nostalgia, 
it just adds. Start with the so-called bargain, $30,000 for the airplane. But the first annual inspection uncovers a dead engine. Add $35,000 for a full overhaul. The logbooks show the seat track airworthiness directive was never done. There is another $4,000. The radios are original and the ADSB mandate is not going away. That is a $10,000 avionics bill minimum. Corrosion in the wing route? If you are lucky, $5,000 to patch. If you are not, the plane is totaled. Even if you escape the worst, the invoice after year one is sitting somewhere between $70,000 and $95,000. The downtime stretches for months. You pay hangar rent while you wait for parts. The meter never stops ticking. Now look at the alternative. The so-called expensive plane, $60,000. It has been flying every month. The engine has 600 hours since a 2018 overhaul. A DSB is already installed. The seat tracks show a fresh compliance sticker. The last annual inspection was signed off with no discrepancies. You pay the seller, sign the papers, and fly home the same day. No hidden debt, no six-month wait, no surprise invoices. The total outlay is $60,000 and you are in the air. The numbers do not lie. The cheap plane is never cheap. The only way to win is to pay for the maintenance up front. The smart buyer is not hunting for a miracle. He is reading receipts, not dreaming. In aviation, you pay once or you pay forever. The whiteboard always tells the truth. Right now, more first-time buyers enter the market than certified mechanics can inspect their planes. Deferred maintenance doesn't vanish with a low price tag. It compounds with real financial and safety consequences. In aviation, every shortcut comes due. The only thing riskier than buying a neglected airplane is believing its true cost ends at the handshake. Fly smart or the bill will find you. Share your own stories below.